Hello and welcome to podcast.init, the podcast about Python and the people who make it great. When you're ready to launch your next app or want to try a project you hear about on the show, you'll need somewhere to deploy it, so take a look at our friends over at Linode. With 200 gigabit private networking, node balancers, a 40 gigabit public network, fast object storage, and a brand new managed Kubernetes platform, all controlled by a convenient API, you've got everything you need to scale up. And for your tasks that need fast computation, such as training machine learning models or running your CI and CD pipelines, they've got dedicated CPU and GPU instances. Go to pythonpodcast.com slash linode, that's L-I-N-O-D-E today, to get a $20 credit and launch a new server in under a minute. And don't forget to thank them for their continued support of this show. Your host as usual is Tobias Macy, and today I'm interviewing Nicolas Evrard, Cedric Crier, and Jonathan Levy about Triton. So, Nicolas, can you start by introducing yourself? Yes, uh, hello uh, everybody. So, I'm Nicolas. I work for B2CK, which is a company uh, working on Triton. And I'm also the president of the Triton Foundation, which is the subject of today. And Cedric, how about yourself? Hello, everybody. So I'm Cedric Crier. Uh, I'm the co-worker of Nicolas at B2CK. And I'm currently serving as uh, the leader of the Triton project. And Jonathan, how about you? Yes, uh, my name is John Levy, and I am not one of the core devs like Nicola and Cedric. I am instead a Triton user. I am a lawyer by training with Advocate Consulting Legal Group, and we have been using Triton for eight years, and I'm involved also with the Triton Foundation. And going back to you, Nicola, do you remember how you first got introduced to Python? Uh, it's almost 20 years ago, in fact. I was at the university. I did my thesis in Scheme, which is a dialect of Lisp. And uh, when I was job hunting, some, of course, there is not many uh, job for Scheme programmers, but one guy on the mailing list told me you should be looking at uh, Python. And indeed, it was a big a good idea because I I was hired by Aragne, which is a company in Belgium, the one that organized the very first Euro Python conference, and uh, there I worked on Plone and Zoop. So uh, it was in two thousand and one, I guess something like that. And Cedric, how about you? Do you remember how you got introduced to Python? Uh... I'm not sure, but I think it's about 15 years ago when I started to work at the company Tiny ERP, which was writing an ERP in Python. So it's just, I, I learned from there. And Jonathan, how about you? Well, so as I said before, I am a lawyer by training, but I ended up at a firm that also did some heavy accounting work. And we had a series of Excel workbooks that someone along the line had programmed some visual basic for applications, but there wasn't anyone left in the company who was able to work with that. That person had left. And so I decided to dig in and thought, well, I've always been curious about programming, so let's see if I can do this. And so I took over the visual basic for applications stuff and that got bigger and bigger over the course of some years and got to the point where that tool wasn't going to cut it. We were going to need a bigger bigger tool. An engineer friend of mine suggested that I should learn Python. Uh, I did some study on that, tried to do uh, migrating from Excel to a Django project that, that didn't go so well. And then I transitioned from the Django project to Triton. And so in terms of the Triton project itself, can you describe a bit about what it is and how it got started? So um, Triton is in fact um, a business software framework. So it provides all the, the, the required pieces that are needed to, to create business applications. And on top of that, the Triton project provides also a set of modules that are covering a wide variety of use cases. It started uh, 11 years ago. I, I don't remember the date exactly. And it's a fork of tiny ERP, in fact, which is uh, well better known now as Odoo, 
I guess that uh, a, a lot of people know Odoo already. It's uh, it's also a Belgian company where uh, Cedric and I we both work at the time, and uh, we we decided to, to to leave this company and to create a fork for. Well, I, I will let probably Cedric explain the the reason of the fork because he's the one behind. Okay, so indeed. It was uh, 10 years ago, I think, or a little bit more. Another uh, co-worker, Bertrand Chenal and me, uh, were working at Tini uh, on the ERP, and we were not very uh, satisfied by the quality of the product and how the project was uh, managed, uh, managed and how it, evolved, it was evolving. And so, as it was uh, an open source project, uh, we decided to leave the company and start our own uh, version of uh, this uh, ERP. Uh, and so we founded uh, B2CK as a company to provide services. And uh, we started to work on uh, Triton. Uh, and redesign and change what we wanted to change. Things, task we uh, worked on was to improve the quality by adding tests. Uh, we make the development more open. So uh, we publish it our repository because at this time, TinyRP didn't publish is uh, repository and uh, we also improved the design of all the modules and how uh, they are, they communicate each other so this took us a little uh, about one year of work until we got the uh, first release the 1.0 and then uh, since there uh, we make a release every six months new modules and so on and you mentioned at the beginning that you're all members of the Foundation for Triton. I'm curious if you can discuss the relationship between the Triton Foundation and the Triton Project and the reasoning for creating that type of an entity for governing and managing the project. Sure. If I could jump in quickly to answer that. So the Triton Project, from my view, has shown a great commitment to the principles of open source. And B2CK, where Cedric and Nicola are, is a company that has devoted a lot of resources to furthering uh, Triton. But my, my feeling was that they didn't want a perception of that this was really uh, pigeonholed by B2CK. And instead, they proactively took the step of forming the foundation as a nonprofit under Belgian law and contributing all the intellectual property of the Triton project to that foundation. Now, B2CK remains very dedicated to advancing Triton, but I think that that um, the foundation exists to make sure that Triton will remain a healthy open source project into the future without relying on any specific company. Yes. I may add something, maybe. Please, please. Indeed, it's exactly that. The, in fact, as we are a fork of tiny ERP, or at that time it was open ERP, we receive a lot of requests of companies that would like to invest their time in Triton. But some of those were afraid that B2CK was the main driving force and that one day or another we might close the the, the code source, the source code, and have a, a complete control over the project. And that's how, as Jonathan said, we decided to create a Belgian foundation because the, those foundations um, under the Belgian laws make it a requirement that you have to follow non-profit goal. And in this case, it's the development and publicity of Triton. And there's a small mistake. <laughs> The foundation doesn't hold the copyright. In fact, every contributor still holds his copyright. So uh, Jonathan, for example, holds his copyright. Everybody holds his own copyright. And so it makes it difficult to, to change the license of the project because the, our license is GPLv3 or later. And uh, you would have, if you want to change, to contact everybody. And... Uh, 
the fact that you have to contact so many people, it will make it difficult. And it allows us to, to, to keep the GPL, uh, I guess, forever. Yeah, I know that things like contributor license agreements have been a very contentious topic in a lot of different projects. So it's interesting that you've decided to avoid that entirely and just let everybody own their own copyright as a guard against somebody relicensing the project in the future. Yes, that's exactly that. That's the contributor license agreement that we we have some issues with and we decided to, 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 guard, to guard us against those changes by by distributing the copyright. Exactly that. Your own point. Yeah. Indeed, we are in the same situation as the Linux kernel, which is GPL2, but it's also uh, the copyright is shared with a lot of developers. So it's a, a kind of protection in some way. And so the project itself is focused on providing the software and the utilities necessary for being able to run and manage a business. I'm curious if you can discuss a bit about the types of businesses that Triton is most well suited to and some of the cases where it might not be a good fit for a particular type of business. Indeed, the the, the main target of Triton is uh, the small and medium uh, enterprise. So I would say it's, it goes from one employee to uh, 200 employees. And for now, the functionality that, has, that are covered by uh, Triton can be helpful to companies that are in the wholesale business or they, that manage, they have to manage a warehouse or the stock. Also, it works for service companies and for production companies. The type of companies that for now we are not providing good enough features for, for them is mainly the retails, the small retails uh, companies because mainly we don't have a, a point of sale for now. And also what we have seen is that we don't fit well with companies that are not well organized. When uh, very small companies sometimes works with just papers and uh, post-it and, and so on, and they have very difficulties to go with uh, an organized tool that force them to follow some workflow and stuff like that. So usually it's because these kind of small companies are no, not mature enough for uh, yet for an, an ERP. But sometimes going, trying to implement an ERP in, inside the company is also a way to organize the company and follow the best practice and define workflow and so on. And one has others. So the way that I would describe it is first we have to talk about what exactly Triton is. So there's the Triton kernel, which interacts with the database, typically Postgres. And on top of the kernel, people implement these plugins. And so as Cedric was describing, there are excellent warehouse plugins, excellent um, project for service companies plugins. And so there's a, there's a divide between Triton can be fantastic for some companies that may not have pre-made, ready-to-go modules available. It would just require somebody to, to write the module. Okay, I would say that thinking about it broadly that way, any company that is needing a database to keep track of you know their internal machinations and where postgres would be an appropriate database any company like that triton would be certainly a project to consider and very likely they would find that there are ready to go off the shelf modules that can take care of what they need now as far as where it wouldn't be a good fit there are companies that don't use a database, as, Triton, as uh, Cedric was saying, that maybe they are small enough that they can just kind of keep track of things as, by, just personally. And sure, if they don't need a database, Triton wouldn't be the project for them. But if you need a database and Postgres is the right scale of database, then I would say Triton is something to consider. And so in terms of the end users of Triton, I guess, who is it designed to be targeted at primarily as far as the people who are going to be interacting with it on a day-to-day -day basis? And what are some of the considerations or design challenges that you face in terms of evolving the product, keeping those people in mind? Oh, that's a tough one. Triton is mainly, a, as it is an ERP, it's mainly a, a back, it's designed for back office users. So we have two, two, two clients. 
one uh, which is the original uh, client that was developed, which came from the fork. It's a GTK client, so based on the, the, the toolkit made from the GNOME project. And we have the uh, JavaScript client, which obviously works through, uh, through your browser. And we try to make those the most ergonomic as possible, but it's not an easy task. I, I think that the GTK client is probably most, more ergonomic than the, than the JavaScript one. But indeed, on the other hand, the JavaScript one is easier to deploy and so on. So it, it has its pro and it's quite difficult to, to know which one uh, to, to choose. In fact, I, I think people can use both. And usually back office user will use the GTK client that they can install. And those, those back office users are accountants, purchase management people and uh, account managers and people like that, that, that they do form filling and they, 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 they have to search some information in the system to see why uh, a shipment hasn't arrived or uh, to fill the fact that you have lost uh, 10 pieces of a product or something. Yeah, and the way we try to keep the ergonomy and uh, the satisfaction of the users. It's that we, we try to make change a uh, sm small step at a time and build on the existing and try to uh, refine it and improve it progressively. Uh, this way, we, we have, we have uh, early feedback for a small change and we try to always improve it or take the, the, the feedback in consideration for the next uh, proposal of change. And, uh, and also, as a, it's a community project. We, we have inputs from uh, the, uh, the whole community who can say the word about uh, the, 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 the interface and uh, uh, the ergonomy and how things are, are done. So, and then as far as the actual workflow of using Triton and being able to maintain an appropriate level of structure for the workflows while providing the flexibility needed to model a given business, I'm curious if you can just talk through maybe the day-to-day -day interaction of a typical user of Triton and maybe some of the customizations that can be applied to simplify their operations or to match the specifics of their organization. Okay, so the main goal of uh, an ERP is to centralize uh, the data in one database. So this way you don't need to to duplicate and to re-enter the, the data in many different software. And also it helps you to keep the integrity of your data. So the typical uh, workflow uh, that you, you have in Triton is that you have the salesman who enter a sale order in the, in the application. So he will select an existing party from the address book, uh, already uh, stored in the, the system, and it will pick some product that is sold, so, uh, selling. And uh, once he has filled the, the, the sale order, it will uh, just confirm by clicking on a button, and automatically the system will create uh, the, sh the shipment document to, to ship the, the product to the customer, but also the invoice uh, for the accounting. And also, uh, as you have a shipment to, to send, the system will know automatically if it needs to uh, purchase, to, to supply the, the, the warehouse from where you are shipping the product, because maybe you don't have enough product for this sale order, or, or you have a rule that you want a minimal a quantity of product and then automatically uh, Triton will create a purchase request for for the missing product and uh, the purchase manager can see those requests that are created automatically and he can convert into a purchase order by selecting the supplier that fits for this uh, purchase 
and uh, make the, the negotiation with the, the, the supplier to, to receive the product. And uh, this document, the purchase, that will be created out of the request, uh, will also create uh, a shipment, but uh, an incoming shipment, shipment from the supplier. And so when you receive the product, you will validate the incoming shipment that will fill the warehouse. And you will know that your shipment for the customer, uh, you can now uh, process it because you have received the product. So uh, as all the information is stored into one database, the information is shared across all the documents and they can trigger automatically some uh, uh, step in the workflow and, and so on. So what was just described there was functionality that you get through a module. So that was the, I, I, we don't use that module. Is that the product shipment module or the warehouse module? That yes. You it? uh, yeah, it's for... Uh... And Triton, the way I would think about it is that you have the desktop client that gives you automatically many tools for browsing or editing the data in the database, as well as excellent tools for restricting access or creating groups of users that have limited access to various parts of the database. And that is just automatic self-working. You get the system going and you have that layer. In addition, based on your company's specific needs, you can write workflows into modules. And so you would create a custom module for your company, or maybe there's an off-the-shelf one that fits you well, because there are many off-the-shelf ones now, that will allow you to go through a workflow, as was described there, where you, you place an order and then take it from order placement through every stage of the warehouse and the shipment out, et cetera. Uh, but you have the flexibility to write whatever workflow you you require. Typically, how your employees are using Triton, it, it depends on what the employee's role is, what, what they need to do. They can use it in either way to just browse and edit the software, uh, excuse me, the database information, or to take steps through specific workflows that are written into a module. Uh, yes, of course. Each workflow step can be customized, can be automated or, or not, and uh, you can add uh, more steps if you want. Everything is flexible on this uh, side. So this is probably a good opportunity to talk a bit more about the architecture and the implementation of Triton and some of the ways that it has evolved since you first forked it from the parent project. So um, the architecture of Triton is a synchronous three tiers application. So the, the usual three tiers, the database, or the, do you say that, the, the business logic, and then the, the, the client, which, in, which, as I explained, is, is a, are both thin clients, one available for the desktop users and one for, for people uh, through their browser in JavaScript. And uh, so, so this is the, the big picture. Then in Triton, you have several layers. So the first one, which provides the access to the database, which is currently following an active record pattern. Previously, it was using a data mapper because TinyERP at that time was using this this uh, pattern. They switch, they switch later, but uh, it has nothing to do with us. And thanks to the uh, active record, we can do introspection on the classes and we infer the database schema and we create new columns in the tables. We create, of course, also the tables if, if it's required. Then you have all the business logic where you have um, the notion of users, groups, and then everything that is needed by, by your module, your own module. So, for example, if you make a module that will uh, uh, model a sale, you will obviously have the sale header with the company that's, that is selling something, the party you are selling to, the currency you are using. Then you will have some sell lines with the quantity you sell, the units of the product you are selling, the product, of course, you are selling, the taxes, and so on and so on. And with all that, you have one Triton module, which models the workflow, which pilots all the steps that your sale, your sale will go through. So for example, you create the, 
in, in, in the start a draft sale and then you confirm the sale after discussing it with your customers and afterwards in, uh, you you process the sale and it will create a shipment eventually if you are selling a product and so on. It will also create a, an invoice, etc., etc. And the next step is displaying all this information to the user because we have the code, but we have to, to, to have a user interface. And the user interface is specified also in the modules thanks to XML files, which defines all the fields are set up on the screens. It's, it's almost like HTML if you want, but less flexible. And we send this XML to the, uh, to the, to the client. The client display all the fields on the, on the screen and the user have also the buttons so they can trigger workflow steps and so on. I just want to add that uh, a particularity of Triton and in the design, it's the, the modules and the modularity. What happens is that uh, each module can define classes. They can be base classes or uh, a kind of uh, a partial class uh, that will be used to construct the, the main class of the active record. So depending of which module are active, activate it. The server will build dynamically the class by composing all the small uh, parts of uh, all the small classes uh, that are uh, disseminated in uh, different modules to construct uh, one, the, the, the main class for a kind of document. Uh, this way, we can have a module that define a, a main object. I can keep uh, with the, the sale example and have another module that extends the sale model by adding, for example, a new field or uh, a new step in the workflow or new methods and, and so on. So the, the server will combine both class to create one main class that will be always be used by the server to manipulate the object. So uh, we dynamically create those uh, base class, and this gives the power of uh, in Triton to be very flexible because uh, by activate a module in Triton, you can uh, modify the behavior of existing objects directly. And you can really modify any property of the uh, of the object. It can be uh, the fields or the class, uh, the methods or on it, and, and and so on. And of course, thanks to the introspection to create the database sh uh, scheme, the, the activating a module that at a new field will uh, automatically uh, create the new columns in the in the database. Well, let me talk about that just a little bit more because th what Cedric is talking about here is one of the things about Triton that I just I find remarkably clever. And it's this different inheritance model where let's say that you have a, a base module like the party module, okay, which is a standard module that's off the shelf. And it defines a party class. And then you have two other modules that you want to rely on. And say one of them creates a variant of party where now they have some new database attribute, you know, let's say middle name, let's say base party has just first and last name. Now this other module has middle name. And now you can create a second new module that also extends party, adding whatever methods or business logic or database columns you like. And you don't need to have a linear tree of inheritance where you've got base module party and then module A inherits the party model from the party module, and then module B inherits it from uh, module A. Instead, there's this plugin logic that's used that allows you to use these modules much more flexibly and install them through PIP. And you don't, and of course, anything that is powerful, you could get yourself into trouble, right? And so it, it, you, you do need, of course, to be careful that you're not going to create contradictions across the modules, but it's a very clever 
different inheritance scheme that I, I've never seen anywhere else. And Triton lets you uses that to let you use modules and it, it j- j- just sort of plug them in a, as you like. And it provides you with some very useful hooks to take care of uh, things like migrations um, in, in the register method of, of models and stuff like that. It, it, I think that it is just very well designed for modularity. And, and Cedric, I ha- have never asked you, but where did this idea for that inheritance model come from? Is that something you saw somewhere or did, did you just think of that? And, and the way it's done is through, the, it'll construct this multiple inheritance where at at startup time, you're creating a new class that's inheriting multiply from each of the declarations in each, each of the submodules. In, in fact, I can reply to that because that's an ID we had with a former tiny ERP employee, Gaetan de Menten. When I was there, we, we were working together there. We had one month to do something that we found cool. And I, I remember that we've done that together. Uh, so it's it it exists also in Odoo, in fact, and uh, it's a, we we had one month to do it. It was a bit too short. So uh, the 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 Fabien, the, the the guy behind Odoo, finished it, but <laughs> not as as cleanly as we would have done it. And uh, so uh, yeah, the the ID it's it's basically it comes from the fact that we were playing with uh, meta classes in python at that time and we were pretty convinced that by using a meta classes you could create classes that would do what what tritons do does now and what uh, odoo does also of course so it's a, it's an idea we had uh, i don't know maybe four, 14 years ago or of, of 13 years. For the records, I ran into a similar design, indeed in Firefox. Uh, yeah, but it's. Ah, yeah? I think it's no more uh, in the current add ons because they use web extension uh, standard. But before that, you could tune all the interface, uh, the, the Zul uh, stuff, I don't know if people remember. And uh, they were also uh, merging class, uh, kind of classes together to to compose the the interface and the, and the behavior. It's the only w- time I see something similar, a little bit similar. That uh, depending on what is activated, you compose a class with parts partial classes uh, around. But uh, yeah, f- for sure that's. One of of the power uh, of the main reason to use Triton is this powerful uh, extension way uh, because it allows us to build simple blocks uh, modules with uh, simple functionality and compose them. Uh, you you pick the modules uh, you want to use by uh, functionality and you can just. Uh, extend them or make some glue to, to make them work together as you like. And this way, you, you reuse a lot of existing stuff uh, that the project provides. And you have just some glue code uh, or some small customization to, to create. So for somebody who's interested in creating their own extensions and modules to plug into Triton, what is actually the process of getting something started and getting it integrated? And what are the available extension points for Triton for them to be able to customize any particular internal behavior of it? I would say f- first to, to start to create your own modules. What the, the project provides a, a, a cookie cutter template. I don't know if you know about it. Cookie cutter is a project to, to scaffold. Scaffold. Yeah, project. So uh, it asks uh, some questions about the name, uh, the version you are needing to use, and so on. And it creates for you the, the, the skeleton of, of the modules. And it's something already working. You can just uh, put it in the Triton modules folder, and you have your module. Uh, but of course, it does nothing because 
you have uh, put any uh, new logical in it. But from there, you can uh, define a new class that will uh, be registered in, in, in the system or, or modify an existing class. So that's for the, the, the Python part. Uh, you write classes uh, in your module. And for, as Nicolas said, for the uh, view layer, you just have to write some XML layers that define the position of nice. the fields on the screen. And that's the way you start to work, uh, to customize Triton for you. Now, if you want to contribute to, to Triton, the best is to first fetch the, the source code from the repository. Uh, it's uh, on the website of Triton. And uh, we have uh, a procedure to submit uh, patches uh, through uh, a code review process. And we welcome if any uh, improvement that people can uh, provide uh, on Triton. So uh, creating a patch is the, the simple way when you want to fix or improve small stuff. Once you start to be confident and you think to, you can uh, contribute a full module, uh, we first ask uh, people to write uh, what we call a blueprint. So it's a description of your goals and how you are going to implement it and, and so on. Uh, it's uh, on our uh, forum that you, you post that and people can discuss uh, about the, the ideas and the design and so on until we reach uh, a kind of agreement about the best solution and the best way to to implement your new the new feature and uh, then once it's it's uh, agree you can uh, submit submit uh, a, a, a big patch with all your modules and then start the the review process from the community and so on until again we reach an agreement about the quality of the of the submission and uh, once it's done one of the the core developers will push for you the the new module uh, on the triton uh, repository and it will be part of the next uh, release now that of course is the process for sort of yeah. one of the official core modules you can of course write your own module for your own your own business or you can write uh, modules that you open source and there are a significant number of modules available on GitHub or Bitbucket that are not part of the core or not officially, you know, sanctioned by the Triton project. And so, of course, use them at your own risk and, and always know what you're installing. But th there are other modules available. Yeah, of than, course, you, just the core one. you can publish your module on uh, PyPy. A module is a, a standard Python package uh that uh, you you can f and you can find uh, a lot of them on PyPy. by the way we have a classifier on PyPy. the uh, triton uh, i think it's framework triton so people can use it to uh, to filter and to find uh, triton modules uh, there and in terms of the overall project itself, as you mentioned, it's been around for a number of years now. And I'm curious if you were to completely start the whole project over today, if there were any elements of it that you would reconsider or redesign given the current state of the art and the available libraries and ecosystem? Yes. <laughs> uh, indeed, it's a, it's a little bit difficult to, to answer because one thing we do with Triton is when we think some, there is something out uh, that exists and is better than some, something we have done. We are not fear to, to trash what we have done and use uh, the new stuff. So we, the project have, have, has evolved a lot in 10 years and we have uh, included or reused existing uh, tools or framework. Uh, uh, that we found uh, that are better than what we had. So at some point, I, I would say if I had to, to start Triton now, uh, I guess I, it will be as it is now. Of course, without all the, the previous uh, version, different tools that we were using back, in, back at that, that time. But 
at, at some way, I have no I, uh, Maybe we will change something uh, tomorrow because we have we found something better for, for a specific need. But for now, uh, I don't see we have nothing in mind. When we thought about this question earlier today, we, we had one stuff that we would probably not not include. It's the, the fact that um, you can have per process uh, a connection to multiple databases. Currently, that's what that's what we do. Probably that's something that we would not do again. Right. And am I right to understand that the Docker is the big changing technology there? That when that was built, the idea was, well, you're going to have one server running Triton and it may need to connect to a lot of things, whereas now you can spin up multiple uh, Docker Yes, products. indeed. Uh, now we... Uh... Most of the deployment of Triton now are just to connect to one database uh, because it's it's much it's much cheaper to to start a new process uh, and so this uh, feature in Triton indeed is mainly used by developers where they the, they have one they start one Triton and they switch from one database to another to test different case or scenario but uh, in production uh, it's not really used and indeed it adds some complexity uh, in some part of Triton that could be uh, removed and simplified that's uh, a point and then as far as the sustainability of the project, we mentioned that there is the foundation that is there to serve as the governing agent and B2CK is at least one company that's involved in the continued development of it. But I'm curious how you're approaching just the overall day-to-day -day of being able to ensure that necessary work gets done and that the project is evolving and some of the approach that you use to ensure the ongoing stability and security of the project, given the criticality of it to a number of people's businesses? So for the project itself, the foundation rely on the fact that it will receive uh, donations from people. And hopefully we, uh, we are very lean, so we don't have a lot of costs. And with the, the few fun, the few donations that we have now, it, it allows us to, to, to have all our servers, the trademarks that are paid. And we have also some, some money to organize sometimes, uh, Triton gatherings of developers or and conferences. And for the, the project in itself, as we are a free software project, we, we really rely, rely on the fact that people use our project and need to need it to to exist for for their for their business. So B two C K, for example, we have customers and they pay us to work on Triton, and uh, there are other companies that that do that. So in Spain, in Argentina, Germany, and so on, France, of course, and thanks to them we are allowed to, to d dedicate some time on the free software project. Although we are a small project, when you compare us to the Linux kernel or Firefox or I don't know, uh, Django, or, we, we, we still can live. And thanks to the dedication of some, some developers that do the, the work on their free time and so on. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit tricky, but it works. And economically, it, it works also. It, we are not uh, unicorns, but, uh, but it works. The main uh, business uh, uh, plan that uh, for the companies uh, around Triton is to sell services uh, on Triton. So the service they provide often involve uh, improving Triton itself. So uh, this is the main way Triton evolve and uh, keep uh, up to date with uh, regulation and, uh, and so on. 
uh, the, the other point was about the, uh, the maintenance and the security. We have some process that allow us to ensure that we don't break too much Triton. Um, first is that we have uh, written a lot of tests for uh, every module has a set of tests by default uh, that ensure uh, some integrity and uh, quality in the in uh, the Triton uh, in the code the Python code and so on. But uh, also we we write uh, extended tests uh, for. Uh, for many key uh, modules, like for accounting, sales, uh, and so on. Uh, we have two kinds of tests. Is the, the, the first one is unit test. So we test uh, usually a method in, uh, on a class and with different uh, values and, and so on. And we have also a larger test, which is more about uh, integration test. Uh, where we we script a full workflow uh, in the uh, in the application. By full workflow, I mean that uh, we have scenario that uh, start, create a sale order, validate the sale order, uh, validate the shipments, or and post the invoice, check that the accounting is right, uh, ensure uh, for the shipment that a back order is created, and so on and so on. And uh, we have a lot of scenario like that. And indeed, each time we find uh, a bug, uh, we try to write a, a scenario that uh, show the, the, the issue or, or a test that uh, ensure that the, that the, the, the code uh, is now uh, tested for this kind of case. Then we have a continuous integration tool that build uh, and run the test on each commit. And so uh, if one change break uh, the, the uh, uh, test suit, it arms the developer responsible for this uh, break. And uh, we try to fix it as soon as possible. And of course, we don't release, make a new release if there is an issue on one test. That's the, how we keep the state of Triton as it is now, the stability. The second point about also it's that we review all the change. So uh, we try to have at least uh, a, uh, one review for each commit. It's not always uh, easy to get because it takes time and on such a uh, open project, people don't, don't always have uh, the, the, the free time to, to make reviews, but to, we try to, to, to enforce that. Uh, and uh, of course, the, the review also ensures the, the security uh, of uh, Triton because we have more eyes looking at the code and uh, they may spot uh, weakness and uh, issue. Uh, uh, and uh, finally, for uh, part the particularity of the security issue, we have a specific uh, process to report security issue uh, where they are only known by a, a very small set of uh, core developers and they try to find the solution and provide a fix. And uh, once we have uh, a proper fix, we make a security release, which is coordinate with the, pack uh, the, package, uh, the packager of uh, different distribution where Triton is uh, packaged. And so we set up uh, a release date for the security issue, which goes public only uh, after this date. That's uh, the point for security. And now for the people who are using Triton, the, the end users, they have the choice of two kinds of release to use. We have a, a long-term support release that we support for five years. So when uh, you are this is uh, the, the best choice if you don't want to upgrade uh, frequently and have new features. Uh, this, feature, this series receives uh, bug fix and security uh, release for five years. 
And otherwise, the normal release are supported for one year. So uh, we give the choice of for to the users to choose uh, which kind of uh, frequency you want to have to upgrade. And we try to make bug fix release every uh, 15 days. If, of course, there is uh, bugs to fix. And yeah, I, I didn't say that, but we make a release every six months. It's a major, a major release with new features, uh, new modules, and new client, and so on. And then as far as the usage of Triton, I'm sure that it's been used in a pretty wide array of businesses. And I'm curious what you have seen to be some of the most interesting or innovative or unexpected ways that it's been used and deployed. One of the most interesting use, at least from my point of view, is the one that GNUELS is doing of Triton. So GNUELS is a project under the GNU umbrella. And uh, they are, their aim is to provide how do say, an uh, HIS uh, hospital information system. Yes, an hospital uh, information system. And sorry, just to jump in because it, it was a little hard to hear. So what he's saying here is GNU Health. GNU Health, yes. Yeah, GNU Health. GNU Health is a <laughs> is an in, hospital information system which uh, stores medical records of people, usually from um, low development countries like uh, Congo, Jamaica, and so on, because in countries like Europe or, or I guess the United States, you have to, uh, a lot of red tapes and uh, laws to follow, and it's really difficult. GNUELS is not, does not, its main point is to bring computer science and, and informatics to, to those countries and to help them to, to have a good trustability of people, so they don't really care about all all the problems that we care about in in our in our country. But in in GNUELS, they they do they care about stuff that are really vital, and so they they have a lot of um, of modules for uh, obstetrics and uh, I don't know anything that goes with the medicine, and uh, it's it's really a, a nice project. There's also the the, the project of John, which is something that I didn't expect it. So. Sure, I'd be happy to describe our implementation. So we are a law firm that services the aviation industry, and the aviation industry is very heavily regulated and record intensive. And so we have a web portal side that is built basically using Flask, actually using a um, slightly different project called Nirid. Um, and our clients use that to input uh, all of their data through web forms, and it goes into our Triton database. And then we have also, um, in terms of our internal workflow, a large number of discrete sort of small tasks that we need to do for each of these clients. And so we have Triton handling our web front end and then also handling our flow of tasks and sort of assignments and delegations of tasks to people inside the company so that we can make sure that we've got a good audit trail and clarity that each and every item is getting done. And that's how we use Triton. This is far away from all usual cases, which are more web shops and sales related or purchase related implementation. That's and uh, indeed, we, we have we had also an, uh, a project that was uh, a little bit uh, uh, different than uh, the usual. It's uh, it was for a, uh, it's a project we developed it for a company uh, where the main goal was uh, to provide an application uh, on the uh, on the cell phone, smartphones. Yeah, uh, where people could uh, buy small stuff like uh, sand sandwich sandwiches from their uh, the local uh, grocery, and they could order it uh, when they were at work uh, in the morning, and uh, schedule the time when they want the their sandwich, and so. Uh, the payment was collected by the application and uh, behind there was a Triton server receiving the orders and dispatch the orders to uh, printers 
in the shop of uh, different grocery uh, uh, everywhere in the city and, and so on. And so they received uh, the ticket with the uh, number and uh, the orders and they prepare it for the time uh, it was uh, specified. And so the, the guy who ordered it with this application can go to the shop and take directly the bag with the, shop, the, the, the cart with uh, the, the, the shopping item and uh, without having to pay because it was already paid by the uh, electronically and so on. And so it was a way to, uh, to skip the lane in such a shop where everybody goes uh, at the same time, uh, get his, uh, his food uh, directly. And so the, uh, the commercial could organize the, the work, prepare in advance the, the orders and, uh, and so on. So uh, that was uh, a nice project where uh, Triton was involved to uh, follow the, the orders he received from the application, dispatch to the right shop and uh, make a, a small accounting about uh, how much was sell and, and so on. At the end, uh, send uh, the total money, order it for, for to each uh, shop. That, uh, yeah, that was uh, an astonishing uh, way of using Triton. And then in terms of the future of the Triton project, I'm curious what you have in store in terms of new feature capabilities or future direction for the project. The Triton project is no real roadmap because it's built by the, the community, for the community. And so each one comes with his own needs and own targets and own goals and uh, try to, uh, to push it in the, the project. So... This, we cannot guide uh, which direction we go or which feature uh, we want to implement for the next release and so on, because it depends on what the community will provide. That's the main uh, picture. Yes, but, but, but of course we, we have some, some ideas that are lingering and that we would like to implement. So, uh, f for example, we, we are thinking a lot about uh, creating, creating uh, more specific applications. Right now, we have an application named Kronos, which is a browser plugin, which allows you to input your timesheets. Uh, that's also the scratch your own itch because we use it to, to, to invoice our customers at B2CK. And I guess other people in the Triton community use it because we know uh, a lot of people that work the same way as we do. Uh, but those applications, they, they, they use specific uh, paths in every module. So if you want a module, can open a path, an entry point, yes, in, 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 the, in, the, um, in the HTTP server, which you can put or pull data from. And thanks to this entry point, you can enter directly into Triton with, of course, your credentials and so on, and have some specific um, actions. So for example, for the timesheets, you can fetch the timesheets of uh, specific days, but you can also push a, a, new, st a, new, a new line in your timesheet. And or, or you can uh, edit a new line, uh, a line, an existing line. And we would like to have more application like that. For example, to do the shipping in the warehouses. But yeah, it's dedicated uh, application. So in some way, it's a way to hide Triton behind uh, a very uh, tailored uh, user interface. I think that something big for the future of Triton is the LTS, the long-term support, which was just added maybe about a year ago. And as we've talked about, Triton's been around for around 10 years and has had this philosophy of we are willing to break things to improve things. And so uh, the, as Cedric was saying, there's a new release every six months. Traditionally, those releases had only received a year of support. And so there was some aspect of conveyor belt of needing to upgrade to the new versions. But now we have gotten to where the core Triton functions, 
I think are pretty stable. I mean, so for example, Nicholas described earlier that it transitioned to the active record model a few years ago, and that, that was quite a bit of API changes. But I don't, there haven't been any changes like that in since then or in, in quite a while. And I think that Triton is now stable enough that as you can hear from uh, what Cedric and Nicholas are describing as new additional features, things like support for browser plugins, that's not going to be sort of breaking changes that would threaten the existing uh, installs. And so I think that a big driver of more people starting to use Triton is knowing that they have LTS, that they have five years of support in the version that they install, um, and greater stability to the API. And the the fact that uh, the core devs have been willing to make such changes has gotten Triton to where it is now, which I think that there are very elegant idioms that it's using. It, 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 it's a very nice system to code in. and. Now that that's not changing so much, long-term support is possible. And I, like I said, I think that that's going to be a big driver of more and more people using Triton. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Uh, another point that we are working is uh, to include uh, a web shop uh, directly. So for now, there, there is many solutions, but uh, external solutions to plug a web shop to Triton. B2CK have developed it, uh, some, uh, but others also have, have developed it, uh, web shop extension and so on. And for now, uh, there is a, a work uh, going on to support uh, View Store Front, uh, which is a new web shop uh, front end that is uh, based on Vue.js. Yes. So it's a, an SPA, single page application, that support also the progressive uh, application. PWA, it's progressive web application. So it can work offline and so on. And uh, so there is a module in review for now to plug Triton and uh, Vue storefront. And this could be also uh, once it's uh, polished and uh, included, a big change for, for, for Triton because it will provide out of the box a web shop uh, to, uh, to small business. And that can uh, be very helpful for many, uh, many companies. companies, yes. There's also the ergonomy that we would like to make a bit better, but it's difficult. Yes, we have the work that we try to to display the, the right data at the right time to the user. So it's a little bit a uh, mix of uh, having a dashboard, uh, but tailor it for uh, the type of user you are, depending on your access and permissions and so on, but also to try to provide you the next task you should work on. So we have some blueprints going in, in this direction. So probably in the next years, we will have a, a better uh, way of uh, pushing the work. All right. Well, for anybody who wants to follow along with the work that you're doing or get involved, I'll have you each add your preferred contact information to the show notes. And so with that, I'll move us into the pick. And this week, I'm going to choose audiobooks because I've been listening to them more with my kids as a way to keep them busy and as a way to keep us all entertained. So definitely recommend finding some good audiobooks, whether through your local library or through a service such as Audible. And so with that, I'll pass it to you, Nicola. Do you have any picks this week? Uh, yes, indeed. As everybody, I try to, to have something to, to think that is a bit joyful. So I started uh, to play Civilization VI. There has been years <laughs> since uh, I haven't been playing Civilization. In fact, in fact, my first contribution to, to open source was to free save the, the free software clone of Civilization, Civilization 2. And now I started to play again uh, to Civilization 6. So if you have uh, some time, you can start to play Civilization 6. Or read a book. I, I, I read uh, uh, an excellent book from, from an author of... China, Liu Sixin. It's the three body problem. It's science fiction, but from the point of view of China, so it's a bit, bit different than, than usual. And 
I, I found that the the liberty of speech of, of the author was quite surprising to me because he, he described in the first chapters the cultural revolution of China and uh, it was awful. <laughs> but I was surprised to read that in a Chinese book. So if you if you like science fiction but with a twist because it comes from another cultural background i i I really recommend it all right and how about you cedric do you have any picks this week um indeed i have uh started to read the integral of uh uh, valerian and laureline it's a french comics from the 17th 70s yeah, it's, it's a big influential uh, in uh, science fiction uh, culture. Indeed, it seems there, there is uh, they influence it the Star Wars movies and uh, and many other stuff. So, yeah, it's uh, old comics, but uh, I enjoy reading uh, those. And Jonathan, how about yourself? Well, my pick for this week, I think, has to be hand sanitizer, as we are all hunkered down uh, dealing with the coronavirus and waiting to see what's going to happen in the next few weeks. But no, the um, the thing I, I'll give a shout out to is it's not exactly a pick, but it is a um, new project or startup that I've been trying to get going for the last year. And I think that we're set to launch hopefully in the next two months. It is royal.com, royal spelled R-O-I-L, as in Roiling River. And it is a better way to interact with RSS feeds, a better way to enjoy content on the internet. Um, so been working hard to get that going, and hopefully we're rounding the final turn and should have a public release in the next couple months. All right. Well, thank you all very much for taking the time today to join me and share your work and experience with Triton. It's definitely an interesting project and one that a number of people obviously rely on. So I appreciate all of your time and effort on that front, and I hope you each enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tobias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to check out our other show, The Data Engineering Podcast, at dataengineeringpodcast.com for the latest on modern data management. And visit the site at pythonpodcast.com to subscribe to the show, sign up for the mailing list, and read the show notes. And if you've learned something or tried out a project from the show, then tell us about it. Email hosts at podcastinit.com with your story. To help other people find the show, please leave a review on iTunes and tell your friends and coworkers. 